beautiful Monday morning, but Finn was nervous. So much so, he kept forgetting to breathe. You see, for Finn, this was a day he'd been dreading. The first day of secondary school. Finn had always been the nervous sort. Recently, he'd agonised over lessons being too hard. Their logic as cold and distant to him as the moon. He'd convinced himself that under such pressure, his brain would simply explode. And then there were the older kids to worry about. Finn had always been on the small side. Recently, he'd imagined all sorts of terrible things happening to him. Finn, time to get up. Come on, or you'll be late. Finn didn't have the normal desire for his favourite slice of toast with raspberry jam. Instead, his stomach was tying itself in knots. Okay, Finn, it's time to go. Oh, no, you don't, mister. Life didn't always go exactly how Finn planned. Mum had decided to take him into school herself, leaving no chance of escape. Well done, that's really good. To his relief, Finn found the teachers were happy for him to learn at his own pace. And when he didn't understand, they were really good at explaining things to his pickled mind. In fact, Finn found all of the lessons were exciting and different. The teachers really valued creativity, imagination and effort. Perfect for someone as curious as Finn. Despite his near disaster, Finn's morning meltdown had faded away. He'd never cooked something properly before, so he threw himself into it with real enthusiasm. Even though it made him a little wobbly. It didn't take Finn long to discover the library, where he was able to fill his brain with all sorts of stuff. Facts he never knew existed before. Finn loved facts. Like, Farmans are members of the Peach family. The dot over the letter I is called a tittle, and it's nearly impossible to sneeze with your eyes open. As well as stuffing knowledge into his noodle, Finn found plenty of ways to tire himself out. Unfortunately, he quickly discovered that his left arm didn't seem to be properly attached to his brain, so his career in some games was very short-lived. Luckily, the variety of activities was enough to suit everyone, and he didn't always need a bulk. The range of wonderful new smells from the kitchen made Finn's tummy rumble. Finn's favourite food was jelly bean and custard sandwiches, a recipe he'd invented. Normally, Finn hated eating anything new, but Ansford's dining facilities were able to satisfy any appetite. Finn really liked the environment at Antwerp. Everyone was so happy. The variety of things on offer boggled his mind. Finn's whole body was now fizzing with excitement. He'd never had so many opportunities before. I mean, where else could he control minions? Or feed real live chickens? He'd already named his favourite one Nugget. Ansford had such a good mixture of practical and theory, and the teachers gave the students enough space to be individual. Kind of like Finn's idea of art. Finn wasn't exactly Einstein at science, or Coco Chanel at designing clothes, but that didn't matter. Ansford still rewarded all his hard work. In fact, they were willing to put up with all of Finn's creative endeavours, however loud they were. Finn couldn't believe how quickly time had passed, but he still headed home with newfound confidence.
The following day, Mum didn't have to get Finn out of bed or drag him out the door. In fact, if Finn could have reached the door handle himself, he would have run to school by now. Going to Answerd never again felt like a chore to Finn. Among the things he learned, worrying is as effective as trying to solve a problem by chewing bubblegum, that he was responsible for his own actions, and that he controlled his own future. Finn ended up taking a full active role at Answerd. He made lots of friends, won awards, became a sports captain, and excelled in many areas of school life. Ansford gave Finn the tools and confidence he needed to succeed. Okay, all look at the camera. Smile for the camera, say cheese. Cheese! Now the world awaited, and Finn could hardly contain his excitement.